Well, good morning, everyone. Buenos dias, bienvenidos. I hope that everybody is here ready to work. Um, I'm delighted this morning to inaugurate, to kick off this next round of the high-level partnership dialogue that we have with Colombia, uh, in which we have many working groups today that will discuss everything from environment to energy to culture and education uh, to human rights. Uh, this really demonstrates the breadth of our relationship with Colombia. Uh, and I'm also delighted to have uh, Foreign Minister Maria Angela Holguin here to head the Colombian delegation. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I will turn this over to our headliners uh, and introduce uh, Secretary of State John Kerry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buenos dias. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We are really uh, very, very happy to have this uh, bilateral meeting here today and this opportunity to continue the dialogue uh, with ourselves in Colombia. And I am particularly happy to welcome uh, Foreign Minister Maria Angela Holguin uh, and the distinguished delegation that is accompanying her. We're happy to have you all here. Last summer, I had the great pleasure of uh, meeting Mr. Olguin in Colombia and experiencing uh, the incredible dynamism of the country, the generous welcome that they gave me visiting a number of different activities. One particularly struck me. Uh, I went to a uh, training center where uh, physically challenged uh, athletes, particularly veterans of their efforts uh, against narcotics and also uh, in the insurgency, were gaining new skills and learning how to train and work together as a team and deal with their new physical challenges. And it was really very, very moving, extremely professional uh, and fun. And I got to uh, play a couple of games with them, and it was a good uh, exchange. So I, I really enjoyed it. And overall, could not have had a, a more generous welcome to a country that I know well by virtue of years of working in the Senate on Plan Colombia and uh, going through a number of presidential races. And I can remember going back in time uh, to serious, serious security challenges. I mean. There are still challenges, but this was existential to the government. And it was great courage, great courage, leadership, and courage by the Colombian people that really brought Colombia to a place now of incredible energy, growth, uh, increased stability, and uh, uh, really playing a very significant role in the hemisphere and elsewhere. And we are very uh, admiring uh, of this journey, I must tell you. Um, so it's a pleasure for me to be able to return the favor of that welcome and be able to host the delegation here today. Uh, President Obama spoke about Colombia's bold and brave efforts to bring about a, last, a lasting and just peace. Uh, and I had an opportunity to see that courage uh, uh, firsthand. I, I met with the troops at the airport saw how they deploy, what they do, got first-hand briefings, uh, met with many of uh, the Colombian people themselves. Uh, and so for me, uh, it was a moving visit and one which really cemented in my mind uh, the importance of what we're doing here today and of this relationship. Uh, I'm particularly proud of two major uh, investments that the United States is announcing today to help transform all of our hopes into greater opportunities for Colombia's citizens. And today, we are making a four-year, $15 million investment in some of the regions that are hardest hit by conflict in order to improve, uh, improve access to justice uh, and to support local governments as they combat corruption and human rights violations. Uh, we're announcing an additional $7 million in support to help uh, implement uh, Colombia's landmark victims law because we believe that addressing difficult issues like land restitution is absolutely essential for an enduring peace uh, to be able to take hold. 
Now, sometimes when you talk about large investments like these, it's easy to lose sight of the real people that this money will affect, the lives that it may have an opportunity to be able to transform, literally. So I want to give you a, a, an example. Uh, Fanny del Socorro of Valencia and her husband, uh, Elid, who were some of the first Colombians to benefit from the victim's law. Years ago, because of the violence, they had to abandon everything that they held dear, their land, their livelihood, uh, and even many of their loved ones. And because of the efforts that we are helping to support today, uh, Fanny and Elid are back on their land. And Fanny said that years ago, she stopped listening to the radio because all she heard was announcements of funerals for her friends and her neighbors. Now she says she can get back to listening to music, and like so many other Colombians, she can get back to living in peace. As the lives of more Colombians change for the better, so does our partnership. No longer is that partnership defined solely by confronting criminality uh, and subversion, but frankly, by working on the lasting prosperity that we are working to uh, provide for people together in our efforts. And uh, the kind of progress that we're making on trade is really a preview of what is possible for a whole range of areas that we're discussing today. Uh, I want you just to think for a moment about what we have accomplished. In the two short years of the us Colombia Trade Promotion Agreement, since it's been on the books, trade has increased 18%. Today, because of the Andean Free Trade Preference Act, nearly all Colombian goods benefit from duty-free access to our markets, and 775 new Colombian companies are exporting to the United States. Uh, we're also creating new opportunities working together on energy and the environment. Uh, since Colombia put forward its Copenhagen targets, in 2010, we have collaborated on a strategy that has helped Colombia to meet ambitious targets for both emissions mitigation and economic growth at the same time. They don't have to contradict each other. Uh, the truth is that moving to reduce emissions and moving to, uh, to uh, implement good environmental practices actually opens up enormous economic opportunity and can create jobs as well as new procedures, new technologies. And with our larger efforts to link energy markets and develop unconventional energy sources and deliver affordable power across the Americas, our partnership can actually prove what is possible when you take environment and energy and put them together and, and, and make the right choices. We also show a shared uh, commitment uh, to preserving our resources for future generations with the MOU that we signed today linking our national uh, park services. I think we can also look to the future by deepening our partnership in areas that are critical in a more interconnected and competitive global economy. By expanding cooperation on information and communications technology, and launching a senior level steering group today in order to advance those efforts, we are delivering on some of the most important commitments that Presidents Obama and Santos uh, made last December. As we expand our relationship in these new areas, the United States is also expanding our engagement with the Colombian people directly. Our Economic and Social Opportunities Working Group is reviewing how we can support uh, that goal by reaching out to vulnerable populations, including Afro-Colombians, indigenous communities, and women. And we're also deepening connections between our two peoples through the educational exchange with 100,000 strong in the Americas, the Fulbright Scholarships, the Martin Luther King Fellow Program, and the English Access uh, Micro Scholarships. Underlying all of our cooperation is our shared commitment to protecting fundamental human rights. And today, we will continue our ongoing dialogue on strengthening 
democratic governance, combating impunity, protecting victims of conflict, and cooperating to affirm human rights within the OAS and beyond our hemisphere. Uh, the fact that Colombia is the only nation in South America which, like the United States, faces both the Atlantic and the Pacific, it really serves as a reminder of an important perspective and an important set of principles that we share in common. As we look on our sort of shared horizons, two of them, and the enormous opportunities that they present us for the future, uh, there's no question in my mind that this relationship has special value, special importance, has a special place in this hemisphere, and we really look forward to developing further uh, this partnership and this friendship. Uh, I think it's my pleasure that I introduce you. Well, without further ado, let me introduce my, my, my colleague and cohort and partner and friend, uh, Maria Angela Holguin. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Curry. Uh, Thank you so much, Secretary Kerry, ladies and gentlemen, delegates, officials of the government of uh, the United States, Mr. Ambassador of Colombia, dear friends. Mr. Secretary, the fact that I'm here starting this high-level dialogue is something very pleasant for me, for my delegation, and for Colombia. We have been able to diversify our bilateral agenda including other uh, topics such as technology, communications, telecommunications, the environment. We have been able to have an agenda with uh, cooperation and securities. We're extremely thankful to the United States, thanks to the support it gave to Colombia in very difficult times. I am convinced that my delegation is in agreement when I say that we are very thankful to the United States because today we have a country full of opportunities, a country that opens up to the world, a country that wants progress, stability, the opportunities for all its inhabitants. It's thanks also to that great effort that you made because you followed us during some very difficult times for us in uh, Colombia during the government of President Santos. We have promoted a very profound transformation in our country with uh, growth, with equality and prosperity. And we have found reconciliation amongst Colombians. You talked about the law on land uh, of the victims. And I think that this is one of the most important steps that we have taken toward reconciliation. This is something that the state had to give its victims and which fortunately President Santos was able to make that necessary step. And today, little by little, you mentioned a case as many other thousands of cases. This is the path toward, towards the reconciliation of all Colombians. We want a peaceful Colombia. We want opportunities for everybody with justice, equality open to the region and the entire world. The changes that we've had in the last few years have allowed us to find a position whereby we have greater investments, we have grown our uh, production and our tourism. I would like to mention some some of these attainments. We have created 2,300,000 jobs and 1,300,000 people have left extreme poverty and uh, as well as many other people, uh, 2,500,000 people have left poverty. Obviously, we have to give all this sustainability, and this, the government has uh, created a series of programs that uh, are focused on the generation of employment, training, education, health, and so on. We have had four of these uh, high-level dialogues with the United States. We want to keep this high level. And of course, we've had tangible uh, results. We have also made our relationship even deeper. 
let's talk about some of our attainments in the energetic field. We uh, signed the um, memorandum of agreement between the Ministry of Mines and Energy and the Department of, en the Department of Energy, where we have tried to uh, make sure that the exploitation of hydrocarbons is very important, the non-conventional ones. This is a, a work plan that is important to us because we want to be more competitive in terms of energy. And what better than having you with us in this undertaking? Colombia is totally convinced of the importance of the electrical interconnection in the Americas. We've talked about this with your delegation. To diversify our energetic forces, we want to take electricity, hydroelectricity from our Andean mountains to California, going through center, um, Central America and the Caribbean. We do not want a single one of our citizens to live without energy in their home. This is one of our attainments. In uh, the 21st century, we have to make sure that this never happens. In terms of the environment, the environment and the climate change, we want to remember the uh, memorandum of uh, cooperation in uh, 2013. As you were saying, the climate change has been terrible and we have had severe damage that we've all lived through. We have to take the necessary measures. We're working in a very committed fashion and we want to make sure that we collaborate with you in terms of opportunities in order for our third uh, dialogue at high, uh, high level dialogue. The United States presented a small uh, business uh, uh, network program, SBNA. This is an initiative that the United States shared with us, and it has a very positive repercussion in our country. We also signed a memorandum in 2012 and 2013. We created the Center for Development and uh, Job Creation in Agua Blanca in Cali. This is a model that also included the small and medium-sized industries with the community, academia, the private enterprise with an investment of about a million dollars with the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Tourism, and the town administration of Cali. These are the efforts that we have to t um, continue with so that we can help our small business uh, men and business women. We also have to create uh, um, techniques whereby we can um, train a number of people. We want to replicate the model of the 400 units for business creation in our country so that they can become centers for small businesses. In terms of human rights, we also had a, a memorandum which was signed in the uh, Presidential Program for Human Rights, USAID, and this and we were able to use we were able to do this with the uh, observatory for the national system of information in Colombia in the next few years we know that we still have quite a lot to do in terms of uh, making sure that this moves ahead our country was also part of the cancer research network with the united states and latin Amer america as part of its commitment and the, um, with our National Institute of Health and the Ministry of Health. These are the type of projects that we hope to be able to uh, take forth because these are, are, are all of great help for Colombia. This version of the high-level dialogue uh, brings to fruition, uh, fruition many of the initiatives that were discussed by President Santos and Obama, in particular technologies, information technology, and uh, telecommunications. Today, I would like to talk about the launch of the Executive Committee for the Plan of Action and the group of uh, the work group uh, between Colombia and the United States in terms of technologies, uh, the information technologies and telecommunications. This is an initiative that started during the meeting between our presidents in December. Through this committee, we know that we will have the participation of big companies, uh, technological companies, academia, and so on. We hope to be able to have um, this type of uh, exchange so that we can, uh, we can reach uh, the development of better applications and digital solutions so that the Colombian pop uh, population, especially those people that have uh, lower incomes, are able to have access to this technology. We also have signed an agreement uh, whereby 15% of our natural parks are uh, protected 
and we have great potential here because our natural uh, parks can promote tourism. Mr. Secretary, we have to work so that there is more and more people, there are more and more people from the United States that come to visit Colombia and its national parks. The 2014 uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation uh, Plan will be the roadmap map for our scientists and linking up our scientists, the research centers and universities between our countries so that they can focus on the sector of uh, agriculture and health. We want to become a totally bilingual country in terms of education where English is taught in all of our schools. We also want to attract Colombians that come to Colombia to learn Spanish. We want to make sure that we can simplify all the procedures for us to be able to do this. We want to make sure that there are uh, quite a few uh, students exchanges between students in Latin America. I would also like you to take uh, advantage of this wonderful meeting so that we can follow up on all the activities that we started so that we can promote new areas where we can strengthen our cooperation. Colombia is undoubtedly an example of how a country that has lived through decades of violence, yet we have been able to maintain and strengthen our institutions. We have kept a solid democracy and we have found a way to grow, overcoming poverty. This has been this has been done thanks to the cooperation of the United States. We have been able to recover our national security. Mr. Secretary Terry, thank you kindly for your hospitality. Thank you to all the officially, officials who made this meeting possible. I would like to reiterate my conviction that this will only make our bilateral relationship deeper. Thank you. I thank the Secretary and the Foreign Minister, and I think with, uh, with those words of inspiration, uh, we all need to get to work. Thank you all very much, and good luck today. I might just mention very quickly, I, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about visas and things. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, I want you to know that uh, the, the, the Foreign Minister has a good judgment, her, or her son has a great judgment, to be studying in Boston. He's part of the 100,000 strong, so we're in great shape.